what I believe about design and creativity. There are no rules. I've seen magazine articles will say, we should do groupings this way, you should do that. Then you lose your, your desire to be, why not, or think out of the box of the creativity. It's not easy. Um, you know, just like our world has become more regulated, regulated, the care for uh, how we're providing for clients, whether the furniture is going to work for them, whether the materials are going to be appropriate, whether the lighting's appropriate, whether you're concerned about handicap access, uh, code issues, you have to really take it, I think, as a profession and not just something that, that you might be good at colors or good at a feel for. I think you have to go beyond that. Um, so, and if you do that, it's truly profession. But also, if it's something you're passionate about, it's not hard. I mean, it's it's not like going to work every day and can't wait till five o'clock. You just enjoy what you're doing because you're working with the public, you're making their spaces lovely, you create a lot of friendships with it, and your clients stay with you a long time. And it's very varied, which is I love. I don't do a look. So it keeps me energized and active because I'm always having to think through somebody else's eyes and somebody else's taste, but put it together appropriately for them. I'm Gail Whiting uh, of Design Consultants in Bedminster. It's my own firm and I've been doing it probably for about 30 years. I'm a past president of ASID and I'm a certified professional interior designer and certified with the state. My concept was building a home that flowed and was an open floor plan, bringing the outside in with lots of windows, tall, low and having um, use of a room that we never use, which is the family room. So I created a space that typically the living room is a gathering space and it flows, it becomes a passageway from the private and the public space. So it works out so well because it invites you to sit in when you first come into the home and it's available for reading, it's available for parties and great entertainment. Then I flow into, <coughs> excuse me, the dining room which I made because I love angles. Uh, it has diagonal corners, it flows, it allows me to open the space into the corridor for entertainment and holidays. There have been some times we've had so many people, I've literally taken the furniture out and made this area one great huge dining room and it's worked out terrific. If you notice the mixture of elements from antique Japanese chests, from when I've traveled, from Art Deco cabinet over there, from antiquing, and then we chop up another corner and we have an angle and it allows you open into this family room, which then is totally open into the kitchen. Doing diagonal floors with this open space, I used wide plank flooring and diagonal wood, which kind of made sense with the diagonal corners that I created stone floor, that's the most practical floor for kitchens, and mixing elements. Uh, people shouldn't be afraid of mixing elements. The counter is Pietro Cardosa stone, which looks like soapstone, but it's not. It's much, much more practical. Uh, honed black onyx and <clears throat> wood, butcher block wood. And then hammered copper. This is a great, great material for kitchen tables. All you do is butcher wax it. That's all you do. Function of your kitchen is so very important. So again, your triangle, your working space, your stove, and your refrigerator. So many kitchens today now are the stove's here and the refrigerator's over there. It's awkward. Large islands are great, but a lot of us now don't have as nice a size a home as what this is. So we have to think about that too when we're all allocating our space. I mixed door handles, I mixed styles. So I mixed the two woods, the painted and the light, or I'll call it medium tone. And lighting is so key. This is what I call wallings, and it sort of accents the inside of the cabinet so you get good light. And what lighting is about is is lighting the task that you're doing. Not necessarily lighting a room to vacuum, but lighting where you're working and the task you're doing. Therefore, we don't notice so much the source of the light, but we notice what it's lighting. That's so, so important. First floor bedrooms are really something that I think is so important. 
and I have it here. Again, another entrance to the pool area and off the bedroom, another entrance off to the pool area with an angled fireplace and lots of beautiful windows. The landscaping around the house is, is quite special. Um, my nephew, Cedarwood Landscaping, did it and he won first place national and first place in the state for the gardens that he created. And what's so fun with the angles is I can be in bed and because that's angled, I can see the reflection of the fireplace when I look at this mirror over here. So it's so fascinating what it creates. There's a little deck off of here, which you look out to nature. And then the master bathroom. The other thing in the home, which I maybe have not pointed out to you, is that you know, so many homes will do 12-foot ceilings and they're voluptuous and you, you kind of feel lost in your space. Eight foot, you feel too small. So what I did was I kept nine feet, but then I raised ceilings. I raised a cathedral ceiling in the master bath. I raised a cathedral ceiling in the kitchen. And I did coffers in the family room. So it gives you that interest and the extra height without feeling consumed by your home. I'm not a neat freak, but I'm not a hoarder and I'm not a sloppy person. I like spaces to feel comfortable and lived in that people feel like they can come in and just relax. So I don't think you want a stiff environment. And I think the best way to keep yourself organized is to try to have places for things or clean out the clutter once in a while. Just learn you have to switch over from winter to summer clothes. You sort of look at it and you say, well, if, if it's not an aha anymore, throw it out. But with your home, it's, you know, even clutter can be nice if, if it's not overdone. And, and you don't, the difference is, is when you have it relatively organized, it, it makes you feel more open and you're more free to do things and express yourself. When it's too busy and too clutter, you feel that way. And, and people don't realize feng shui and the feelings that our spaces create in us or that we can have them create for us. And in this bedroom, <coughs> Is, is where I use kind of a secondary office where I'll bring home floor plans and I'll work on, on space planning here when I want to just enjoy my home. I think what a designer can do best for a client is think through their eyes, take their budgets into consideration, and what we can do is we know inexpensive lines that still look good and not junky, so you can mix them nicely and save people money. Uh, where we're expensive is we also can design things and we have more um, expensive items at our availability than what you'll see at local stores. But if you're a good designer, you're working with the client and their needs and their budget and, and, and presenting whether it's a young couple starting out or empty nesters or somebody who has a lot of money or somebody just needs paint colors to select it. To me, that's the spectrum and that's what's exciting. I love what I do. I don't plan to ever retire. So my future wishes are to create another environment like this, smaller scale, and to travel and to continue to have wonderful clients and, and move forward in life.